If you're moving to Austin from somewhere like New York or Boston or Chicago or Seattle, one of the things you probably love about that area is that it's really walkable and it's really convenient. You have like your coffee shop and your bodega or your grocery store on the corner. You have like your bookstore that you go to all the time and a park where you walk your dog. And you get to kind of like hang out in this little community right around the corner from your apartment or wherever you're staying at. A lot of people who are moving to Austin kind of have that feeling or that vibe that they want to maintain that quality of life or that style of living in Austin. And Austin is not exactly set up like that. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the most walkable neighborhoods in Austin and give you an idea of what exactly that means for that specific neighborhood. And if you're going to live here, kind of the range that we're looking at for buying a home. But I want to preface this with saying most places in Austin are not as walkable as you would think as in like New York, Chicago, or Boston. And we don't have very robust um, public transportation. So we don't have like a metro line. We don't have a subway. We have a light rail, which is kind of really just like a commuter rail. So what I'm trying to say is like, don't rely on public transportation. Don't rely on walking. You are going to need a car in Austin. Um, and we're going to talk about what the most walkable neighborhoods are in Austin, if that's something that's really important to you, or you want to be like walkable adjacent or somewhere that's like, oh, I can drive five or 10 minutes. That's okay. Or like, no, I need to walk everywhere. So let's jump in. Hi, I'm Tiffany Moore. I'm a local realtor and broker right here in Austin, Texas. I help people from all over the world move here, sell their homes here. If that's something that you're thinking about doing, my contact info is below. Feel free to text me, email, DM, whatever is easiest for you, um, whatever is more comfortable. Reach out to me. I've got your back when you're moving here or when you're selling your home here. So I'm going to kind of do the opposite of all the other YouTube videos. I'm going to give you the goods right off the bat. So we're going to go in direct order of most walkable to least walkable neighborhoods in Austin so that you kind of know what to expect. So the first neighborhood they're going to talk about is downtown Austin. It is the most walkable area in town. It's one of the most popular areas in town. It's got a lot of really cool stuff to do. The Capitol is there, the Convention Center, the Paramount Theater, which is somewhere that I love. Just home to a lot of different like shops and restaurants and bars. It's a really good place to explore on foot. Um, and some of my favorite places are in downtown Austin, like Casino El Camino. This place has the best burgers in Austin, hands down. It's a little dive shop. It's got like a hellscape theme. There's really loud, like horrible music and like B uh, horror movies on all the time. But the burgers and the food are amazing. The drinks are cheap. It's it's the best place to go. Across the street from that is All Saints Tattoo. You can tell that I love tattoos. This is where I have pretty much all my tattoos from. One of my favorite shops in Austin. I would go get tattooed, go across the street and have a burger and a beer, go home for the night, call it a good night. Um, and then another place that I love in downtown is Parkside. You know, all these places are off of 6th Street, which is really interesting because I don't really go on 6th Street a lot. But Parkside is like an amazing kind of like upscale restaurant that is tucked away from the madness of 6th Street. Like it's, it's, a, it's a really good restaurant. They have a delicious food, really good cocktails. It's a nice chill vibe in there. They have really good AC, um, which is really important, especially this time of year. But what I'm trying to say is like, there's so many cool spots to go to in downtown Austin, and this is the most walkable neighborhood in Austin. So when people say that they want to live somewhere like a New York or a Chicago or a Boston, I tell them like, unless you're going to live in a condo in downtown Austin, that lifestyle is not really going to be very realistic. So downtown Austin does have like, you can walk down from your condo and there's coffee shops around the corner. There's some little mini grocery stores, but not like you would think of um, that they have in Chicago, Boston, New York, all those other places. You're still going to need to go to HEB, which is our huge like regional grocery store. You're still going to need to go there for your groceries. And so you're, you're going to need to like Uber there or drive there or whatever. And because it's not, you know, just downstairs and you can go there and grab a pint of milk whenever you need it, you're going to kind of want to load up. So you're going to need to get like your groceries for the week or at least for a couple of days, go back to your apartment or your condo. Um, that's the only thing that you really can't do in downtown Austin is buy groceries, but you can pretty much do everything else. You can walk everywhere. You can bike everywhere. They have these cool bike rental like spots and shops where you can just like rent a bike for a day or an hour or half a day whatever you really need it for. Um, and that's really going to help you get around most places in downtown. But the only thing that you really won't be able to do is do your grocery shopping. 
So you can walk almost everywhere downtown. The question, especially this time of year, I'm filming this in like mid-June. The question is whether you want to. So starting this week, Austin is getting above the hundreds in temperature. I think this week with the heat index, it's going to be between 105 and 110 already in the middle of June. So you can walk places in downtown Austin. The question is, do you want to? I'm going to paint this picture for you. Not only is it hot, it's humid. So if you're even just walking like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, by the time you get somewhere, you're probably going to be very sweaty. You're going to be very hot. Your face is probably going to be pink. So yes, you can walk places, but if you are going to be like relying on walking to go to all the spots that you need to go, run all your errands, do all the things, meet all the people that you're trying to do in downtown, you may not want to walk. That may be something where you're like, I'm going to take an Uber here, or maybe I'm just going to ride a bike and get that like breeze going on your face to absorb some of that sweat and cool you off. And it'll take you less time to get there. Um, but it is really like, you really have to consider the weather when you're trying to figure out, do I want to walk somewhere or not in Austin, Texas? It's a really big factor that you can't overlook. So if you're going to live in downtown Austin, you're probably looking at living in one of the condos or apartments in the area. There really aren't any single family homes in Austin. It's all condos. So if you were to buy a condo, I'm going to share with you the most expensive and the least expensive condo on the market right now and kind of what to expect in both of those prices. So the lowest price condo on the market right now in Austin is 255k, which is like shocked me. I couldn't believe there was actually a condo on the market for 255. It's a one bedroom, one bath. It's 600 square feet. It was built in 1966. It has popcorn ceilings and it has a $500 a month condo association fee. So this is really something to keep in mind when you're buying condos is there is going to be a hefty condo association fee, whatever building that you're with. So um, keep this in mind. I saw some pictures of this condo and it pretty much looks like a time capsule. Like it definitely needs to be renovated, needs some upgrades and updates. It does have popcorn on the ceilings, but for 255, you know, it's probably not that bad of a deal. Um, the highest price condo downtown is 3.795 million. It's on Congress and it's at the Estonian, which is one of the most highly sought after condo buildings in town. So this unit is 2,100 square feet. So basically like the size of a house. It was built in 2008. It's a two bedroom, two and a half bath, and it has a $2,100 a month condo association fee. But with that, you get like it's prime location, like the Estonian is on Congress. This unit itself has amazing views. It's on a corner. It's got incredible views of Lady Bird Lake and of South Congress. Like if you're going to buy a condo in downtown Austin, this is the one that you want to buy. And at 3.8 million price tag, like, of course, who, who wouldn't want to buy that? So the next most walkable neighborhood in Austin, downtown's the most walkable. This next one is South Congress. So South Congress is known for its like quirky shops. It's got really eclectic restaurants and places to hang out. It's got really gorgeous views looking back at downtown Austin. It's also very highly walkable. And most of the stuff that you're going to see is off of South Congress. That's why it's called the South Congress neighborhood. So this is home to if you've seen uh, any of the people standing in front of the I love you so much signs. This is at Joe's Coffee Shop on South Congress. And also the Continental Club is on South Congress, which is self-proclaimed the granddaddy of all local music venues. It's it's really awesome. Um, it's definitely like an old, cool Austin staple that you should check out if you love music. Um, and of course, if you're coming to Austin, you probably love music. So it's, it's a place you need to check out. South Congress has definitely glowed up in the past few years. It used to be a little bit more older Boston or Austin, a little bit more boho, but it has definitely kind of had like a facelift and kind of a, a turn of events in a lot of different pockets of South Congress. So Tons of awesome restaurants to check out, lots of shops, uh, coffee shops, bakeries, cool places to just like hang out and walk around and enjoy life. These are some of my favorite places to check out on South Congress. The first is Perla's. This is hands down my favorite restaurant on South Congress. It's like high end surf and turf. They have oysters, steak, they have lobster, they have like amazing fries. Everything is super fresh and very well prepared and their cocktails are delicious. They also have a huge front patio. So sitting on the front patio at Perla's having like oysters and a cocktail is my idea of like a perfect spring or fall afternoon. They do have it pretty shaded and I think they have fans out there in the summer. 
Um, just kind of take a look at the weather if you're going out there during the summer because it gets very hot. It can be very hot. Uh, another place that I love that's kind of the other end of the spectrum as far as like fine dining is Magnolia Cafe. So this is a diner. Um, it's an awesome diner in every sense of the word. My favorite thing to get there is pancakes with fresh strawberries. For some reason, you can't get them everywhere in Austin, but I can get them at Magnolia Cafe. Um, it's just an awesome, truly Austin place to hang out and have breakfast any time of day. And then around the corner from South Congress in the same general area is Elizabeth Street Cafe. And this is like a Vietnamese slash French fusion restaurant. They've got banh mi, they have dumplings, they have pho, and they have rice bowls. They also have amazing cocktails and teas. And when I'm not in the mood for a cocktail, I get their shrubs, which is something that I just learned about. It's kind of like a watered down vinegar, almost like the same idea of a kombucha. Really delicious. It's not sweet. It's kind of tart. Um, but still bubbly and refreshing. I highly recommend it. If you're not in the mood for a cocktail, try one of their shrubs, or if you want something hot, try their turmeric tea. I know as crazy as it sounds, I do love a hot tea when it's hot outside. Their turmeric tea is delicious. So what I like about South Congress versus downtown is South Congress is surrounded by single family homes. So if you wanted to live in a walkable place, um, you want to be close to the cool shops and restaurants and things like that, but still have a house, South Congress is a really good a neighborhood to check out. The houses are really awesome. They have a ton of character. Most were built anywhere between the 40s to the 70s. Some were built in the 20s and they are at all different stages of renovation. So some of them have been completely torn down and rebuilt just on the lot that it was standing on. Um, some of them are just straight up time capsules and they look the same as they did when they were built in 1945 with like the pink tile in the bathroom and the pink sink and the pink toilet and like the laundry chutes and everything. Um, it's really cool to see. And then you've got everything at all different stages in between. So while the homes here are lovely and the neighborhood is walkable, this is one of the more expensive areas in town. So as of filming this video, the lowest price tag for a home in the South Congress neighborhood was $700,000. And this is a straight up tear down, like it says it in the listing. So if you buy this property, you're buying it just for the land so you can build your house on it. And the most expensive home is 3.8 million, pretty much the same price tag that we saw in downtown Austin. This is a, this is a house, so it's 3,500 square feet, it's five bedrooms. The listing says that this is the number one Airbnb in Austin with 2,500 five-star reviews. So this is kind of like an investment, really, if you wanna look at it that way, or it's just a gorgeous, big house on South Congress. Either one would be awesome. So South Congress is just on the other side of the river from downtown. You could walk from one to the other. You could stop on the South Congress bridge and watch the bats come out during the summer. But remember, keep in mind the weather. It's going to be very hot from like June to mid-October. You're probably not going to make that walk from South Congress to downtown unless you've got a hat, you've got sunscreen, you've got water, you've got like a towel or an extra t-shirt or something to like dry yourself off. Like it's going to be really hot and sweaty. So while Austin is walkable, just think about the weather when you're making your plans. Okay, the third more walkable neighborhood in Austin is East Austin. So this neighborhood has undergone a lot of change in the past few years. Some call it revitalization, some call it gentrification. Um, but its history is like a really vibrant jazz and blues history. And the East Side has always been like a cool, artistic, individual area. It's always kind of had like a go against the grain vibe. And it still does. Um, it's always been a tight knit neighborhood and a true community in like the real sense of the word. So a lot of those same themes still run through the East Side, but they're on like a more upscale, more developed or more developed point of view. Some of the old jazz standards are still there, but they're just like right up next to new apartments and condos that have been developed over the past 10 years. The East Side definitely has a distinct vibe from South Congress. It's a little bit more independent, a little bit more underground. Some places are a little bit more grimy, um, and, but some of that is changing with the new development that we're getting. It's still highly walkable, lots of shops and restaurants, parks, bars, things to do, and it just got a new Whole Foods at the train station for our light rail. So I mentioned we do have like a commuter light rail. It goes through downtown, it goes through the east side, and now attached to the train station on the east side is a whole new Whole Foods. So some of my favorite places on the east side are Whistler's. They make the best whiskey drinks in Austin. Easy Tiger, they are known for their traditional German style sausages or sauerkraut, their pretzels, and they make amazing, amazing bread and pastries. Um, and then Nixta. Nixta is a high-end taco place. 
They nixmalize their own maize for their tortillas. If you know anything about making tortillas, like it's not just take it out of the packet and put it in the skillet. Like they take the grains, they nixmalize it, and then they make the tortillas from it. So it's the whole process. Everything is fresh. It's handmade. It's very well done. Though, I mean, I could name a ton of places on the east side that I love. Those are like the top three that came to mind first. So what is it like actually living on the east side? A lot of the new development that's being built are apartments. They're not necessarily condos. But the good news is that there's still a lot of single family homes on the east side that have a lot of charm and character. Most of these are going to be single style homes, more like cottage style homes. They're just kind of like similar to South Congress. There are homes that are everywhere in the renovation stage. Some of them have been torn down and have had new construction homes built on top. Others are in different stages of renovation. Some are time capsules. Some are somewhere in between. The East Side is definitely more affordable than South Congress, but it's still not necessarily a steal unless you are coming here from New York, California, or Seattle. So as of mid-June, the lowest price listing on the East Side was four seventy-five. dollars and this is for a house that is 920 square feet. It was built in 1922. And this house is actually a teardown. So you're buying it for the land. You're going to tear down that house. And then you would build your own home on the lot. I checked out all of the other lowest price listings on the east side. Everything under 500000 is a teardown. So you're going to have to pay close to five fifty dollars if you want a house that is decent. Probably still needs some renovations and some work. But five fifty dollars is a lot more doable than like... 700 for a teardown. And as of today, the highest price listing on the east side is 1.75 million. This is a 2,800 square foot house. It's four bedrooms, three baths. It was built in 2012. It's totally modern. It's got total contemporary design. So this is one of those houses where they, they bought the older house, tore it down, and then built this new one in 2012. So those are the most walkable neighborhoods in Austin. I'm going to talk about kind of a different area of Austin that I think is more realistic if you're moving to town. So North Loop, Brentwood, and Allendale, out of all the neighborhoods that we're talking about, these are gonna be the least walkable of the neighborhoods that we're talking about today, but I feel like they're more representative of Austin proper than any of the other areas. So downtown and South Congress are great, but they're heavy on the tourist side, and even the east side is getting a little bit more heavy on the tourism versus the local aspect of things. Um, but it's really area like the neighborhoods like North Loop, Allendale, and Brentwood that are more representative of what it's actually like to live in Austin. And they are the most walkable areas of the city, other than the three that we just mentioned. So North Loop, Brentwood, and Allendale are all pretty similar in terms of walkability. And by that, I mean, they're kind of more cycle friendly and cycle ability than they are walkable. So these are the areas of town that are tucked away in neighborhoods and there are coffee shops, there are restaurants, there's breweries, there's all these things along the main strip in the community. So you've got all this stuff along the main strip and then there's so many neighborhoods and streets along the sides of those main strips where you have easy access to all that, but they just may not be very walkable. So if you literally want to walk out your front door and be at a coffee shop within a five to 10 minute walk, you're going to need to be in like downtown South Congress or the East side for that. But if you're okay with a short, like five to 10 minute drive, your options are really going to open up. So here's what homes look like in these neighborhoods. They're a little bit more affordable because they're not directly in the center of town, but they are in what I call Austin proper. And they're in the middle of the Austin vibe and kind of that Austin lifestyle. All the things that you would do on your regular day-to-day -day basis are very Austin-y. So the lowest price home in this area is 300,000. Um, I was really surprised to see this house actually. It's 576 square feet. It's two bedrooms. However, this is an estate sale and it's a teardown. So the house at the next, the next price up, that's like an actual house that you could live in, was five fifty. dollars um, So this is going to be like the lowest of the price range for livable homes in this North Loop, Brentwood, Allendale area. So it's five fifty. dollars It's a 900 square foot house. It's got three bedrooms. It was built in 1953. It has been totally updated and renovated with like a fresh, the fresh urban farmhouse style that is pretty popular in Austin right now. And the highest price house is $3.4 million. So this is about 4,400 square feet. It's five bedrooms. It is literally brand new. It was built in 2023, and it has a pool. It's got a gorgeous design inside, as you can imagine. So around 3.5, 3.8 is going to be the high price point for some of these most walkable neighborhoods that we've talked about in Austin. But the low points are varying depending on the neighborhood that you're in, 
um, the location, how walkable it is and all that good stuff. Austin has definitely been taking steps to be more walkable and to be more walking and bicycle friendly in the past few years. We're just not quite there yet. And when you're comparing us to cities like New York, Chicago, or Boston, where literally you could have like the top five places you go to every day within a 10 minute walk of your neighborhood. I don't know that Austin's ever gonna gonna get there because we just don't have the same regulations. We don't have that population density and we don't have the public transportation to support that. But if you are looking to be somewhere more walkable, hopefully this video gave you um, a few different neighborhoods to check out and to consider. If you need help, when you're moving to Austin, my contact info is below. Feel free to reach out to me. I have got your back when you're moving down here.